All right, here we go. Here we go. Ready? I am. Ready? Okay. Give me a... Let's go. S. Let's go. L-E-T-S-G-O. Let's go to spell spiritual gifts. Oh. You're going to do let's go? That'd be too long. I don't know if I'd be able spiritual to spell Spiritual gifts it. is going to take a while. Be able Give to spell me a P. <laughs> Give me an I. Give me an R. Give me an I. Give me a T and a U and A and L. All right. We're going to pause a second. Spiritual now gifts G I F T. All do you right. You want to start this over? So no, I do not. Subject to no, we're doing this. this. Ridiculousness. Um, so I enjoyed uh, last week in that we just went through some of the spiritual gifts, and I thought we'd just go down uh, the list here. Now, as you know, uh, if you've been listening, is that I don't think these are an exhaustive list of spiritual gifts that Paul lists, but in different places we see certain gifts listed, and so I, I think it's kind of helping us as we go through this to to look at how we can yield to the Holy Spirit and how these are some of the giftings that might be expressed. One of the things that's very important to recognize, but I just jumped into it. We didn't pray. We didn't just, well, I guess I spelled out spiritual gifts and everything. Uh, but one of the things that maybe some of you've been raised with is maybe you went to a spiritual gifts class or you read a book and someone will tell you something very mm -hmm. specifically because we love to make everything linear and specific. But the reality is the Bible is not as linear and specific. If only it all could like truly be inventoried, I that know. would be if so only, much easier. And here's the deal. There's not a dictionary that comes along with the Bible. Mm. We look at the words and how they're used in scripture, mm. and then we kind of try to figure out their meaning. So to figure out the mm. meaning of any uh, Greek word, let's say, for instance, that New Testament is written in Greek. Mm -hmm. Well, we see the usage in the New Testament. Well, the New Testament isn't that big. And so some of the words we are looking at here, they're only used a few times. And so you look at it, how it's used in its original context mm -hmm. that we're maybe studying the scripture. We look at other scriptures. Mm -hmm. And through that, we kind of try to see, okay, there seems to be a general usage. Then we compare it to something else uh, like the Septuagint. The Septuagint mm -hmm. is the Greek translation of the Old Testament. Old Testament is written in Hebrew. But that helps us as well to see what Greek words they use to translate Hebrew words might help us to understand the Greek yeah. words for the New Testament. Because the context can be so limited sometimes within the specific text right. that we're looking at. And so then outside of that, then you look at, if, are there any cultural texts that mm -hmm. of the usage of that word during that time? And then from that, mm -hmm. you just kind of see general trends, and then we come up with a definition. So when you're reading a definition mm -hmm. of uh, what this Greek word means, that's what they did. It wasn't that they went to the Greek Bible, mm -hmm. A dictionary they just did a word study yeah and the word studies of what it says in the scripture what it says in the old testament mm -hmm. what it says in the culture then they come uh, to basically a consensus and those consensuses are not always uh the same that different scholars have different mm -hmm. ideas of what it might mean so all that to be said uh the best way for you to learn any word in the new testament is for you to do a word study first, to find that word. And what you can do online is you can search uh, Greek New Testament. You go, I don't read Greek. Well, then you can use this word interlinearity, or any linear, in, inter, <laughs> I'm saying it wrong. By the way, I'm noticing the sun is coming out. It's it's changing outside. And so our tent is changing. It's we're getting so darker on and these lighter. Days. It's like we're bringing filters in here. We kind of turn a little greenish and then we've got like a warmer yellow sort of color. But you'll have basically translations that will show you the Greek mm -hmm. and it'll show you the English and you can follow along. You can see the English word, you can see the Greek word. You click on the Greek word, it'll show you a Strong's concordance definition or a Vine's concordance definition. Again, those are just word studies. So you could just look at all the occurrences of that. You can do that without a seminary education. So that's a great way to study anything. You're leading a Bible study. You just want to know more about it. Study the word. See how it's used in different Greek. I concepts. love actually that you are touching on this because I, I think something that's really exciting um, and that we should just feel incredibly blessed by is the fact that God gave us brains to use and he gave us our, our spiritual being that they are very, you know, intertwined. And what you're getting at, I think, is that we can be critical thinkers and be highly spiritual at the same time. Yeah. And we don't, there's, there shouldn't be a mystery to this. Yeah. Uh, I have a bit of education, so I do know a little bit more about some things. And there's a part of being your pastor where you kind of pay me to do some research and figure things out and bring it to you. But my education shouldn't be a hindrance to you finding God. And so the reality is any word you find, here's a, especially you, you find it in a scripture, 
you can just Google, you can say Greek word for this, the biblical word, our, our Greek word mm -hmm. for, and put even a scripture reference, and it'll take you to the sources. And instead of going to people's blogs and posts, mm -hmm. just go to some sort of concordance, and you'll mm -hmm. find Vines will come up, Strong's will come up, Bible Hub, different places, and they might show you a bunch of different translations. And then you just go from there, and you figure out what it means. But the best thing to do, really, is just to look at all the scripture references. And that almost always uh, encourages my resolve to believe even more mm. strongly in my convictions of what I think a scripture means. Yeah. So it, it, it can make you go, well, it's not wrong to really believe that it means that yeah. because I saw it used that same way mm -hmm. in seven different verses. Uh, that'll help you. So with that, uh, we're going to look at, we looked at last week, kind of the, the offices, spiritual offices. We have that there was apostle mm -hmm. and then prophet and then evangelist and then uh, pastor, mm -hmm. and then teacher. And the reason I can remember those with my bad memory is I think they're also listed in the order of kind of what comes first. First, there's the apostolic goes out into the world, mm -hmm. establishes a church or a series of churches. Uh, to do that apostolic work, you need prophetic leading. So the, the prophetic or the prophets who are kind of looking, where do we go? Where do we strategically mm -hmm. align ourselves that we see in the book of Acts? And then once you have that, you have the evangelist. And the evangelist is sharing the good news, evangelist, good news. So the first thing is people got to get saved, right? So right. in the order of things, which one of the reasons we don't talk about evangelists much is mm -hmm. a lot of the American church is just for Christians to get more food and more fed more and more sermons and more nuance. But that's not really what was happening in Acts. The first thing was let's get an apostolic, go out and plant a church, start mm -hmm. a church, reach a community that doesn't know Christ. Second, let's make sure we have a prophetic leading because we're going to have to strategically do everything here based on what the Spirit's saying, what's happening in the heavenlies. And then next, we need an evangelist, people to preach or evangelist giftings. That yeah. The goal is to be preaching the gospel. After that, people are gathered together. They're saved. What do they need? They need a pastor. They need someone to be able to nurture and uh, care for their needs, their spiritual needs, their physical needs. And then as they're pastoring, we need some teaching. And so I think it's an order of a hierarchy, not that teaching isn't important, but you can't really teach people who aren't saved, right? They got to be transformed first. And so that's what we looked at is those five main uh, spiritual offices and also giftings expressed. Mm -hmm. We're going to look at just some other giftings yeah. and then look at some of the definitions, word study that I've done. And then I'm going to ask Jen, what do you think that means? And mm -hmm. then I'm going to tell her if she's right or wrong. Right. So you can judge her as well. No, we're just going to like, what does it look like now in our, in our modern mm -hmm. age? Because some of these words, we really don't have a lot of context. And you might have taken classes that said, this is what it means. And here's the five ways it expresses itself. And here's the four ways. And that's all nice. But I'm just going to tell you, the Bible does not give that clarity. Mm -hmm. So if someone tells you the gift of exhortation is these five things and it expresses itself in these five ways, mm -hmm. they're just kind of making stuff up. They're just looking at what they see and making a system out of it. And it might be true. They might mm -hmm. see those things, but you can't go, thus saith the Lord, this is what exhortation looks like, because we just don't see that in the Bible. We can say it seems to be what it looks like in the churches I've gone to or right, when right. I've expressed it, mm -hmm. but that might not even be the same thing as what the Bible means by exhortation. It might be another gift that we call exhortation and that, you know, we being impose on the scripture. And being expressed differently. Yeah. All right. So let's go uh, and share a little bit of these scripture lists. So uh, we looked at this last week. So here's the main mm -hmm. scripture list. We got Romans 12, 6 through 8, 1 Corinthians 12, 8 through 10, 1 Corinthians 12, 28 to 30, Ephesians 4, 11, 1 Peter 4, 11. All of these passages deal with spiritual gifts. There's a few other places that actually talk about spiritual gifts. For instance, the gift of celibacy. I think we'll talk about this one of these uh, weeks. But these are the main gifting lists. And we went through actually Ephesians 4, 11, the apostle, prophet, mm -hmm. evangelist, pastor, teacher. But now I'm just going to go down some of these. You'll see some of the gifts are in are in, in several lists. Some are only in one list. And uh, I think it's because uh, Paul could have listed any, any amount mm. of giftings. He just kind of picked some. He might even pick them based on what are the needs mm. of the community he's writing to. Yeah. So <clears throat> we talked about apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. Now let's get to service, the gift of mm. service. The gift of service, this is a perfect example of how nebulous gifting uh, really is in the explanation of the scripture. Service means in the Greek is diakonia. Uh, diakonia basically means ministry. And so we sometimes narrow it down, like the gift of service and diakonia, where do we mm -hmm. get uh, diakonia? We get deacons, right? And so people begin to think, 
okay, so the gift of service is someone who maybe doesn't preach and teach, but there's someone who just, uh, you know, helps with feeding people and caring for mm -hmm. them, fixing things that are wrong in their mm -hmm. house, you know, good services. That is an expression of service, but the scripture doesn't limit it to that. Mm. The scripture would also include that pastoring and teaching is a form of service. Mm. And that's where we, we separate it too much. And in fact, there were, and we'll just read these scriptures, whatever spiritual gift we're doing, it ultimately is for the purpose of serving others. So this mm. is a very, I actually think it's a very general kind of gift to describe mm -hmm. all gifts. And here's just some scriptures, 1 Corinthians 12, 5. And there are a variety of ministries in the same Lord. Mm -hmm. That's the word, a variety of ministries. So even you can't make ministry a single gifting because the whole issue wow. is there is a variety of ministries, but the same Lord. So uh, in 1 Corinthians 16, 15. Now I urge you, brethren, you know the household of Stephanos, uh, that they were the first fruits of Achaia and that they have devoted themselves for ministry to the saints. Mm -hmm. Now, there are deacons ministries in churches. Have you ever heard of uh, Stephen's ministry? Right, uh, right. And it's based on this scripture. Again, uh, being a minister, as Stephanos in this case, of devoting himself to minister to the saints, it does mm -hmm. seem to imply a servant's heart. Like, mm -hmm. like he's not taking the lead, but more like what do the pastors need? Yeah. What does the congregation need? And in that sense, mm -hmm. it might be you're, you're doing different works. Like the pastor probably doesn't need another preacher, but the pastor might need something else, like uh, support with while I'm preaching, I need someone to fix these mills. Or, or the service you can see in the sense of they're coming alongside and doing what the other people can't do as well yeah. or what the other people don't have time to do. So, you know, it makes sense in that sense. Uh, the next scripture. Now, all these things are from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Amen. So in that mm -hmm. context, uh, the ministry of reconciliation. So is my gift ministry? Well, we mm -hmm. all have the ministry of reconciliation. So I just want you to know how broadly mm -hmm. it's used. And right. Here, that wouldn't exclude right. anyone. That's something that we are all called right. to. And it's also to show you the term ministry mm -hmm. is used for many different things than just, uh, which I've seen people, oh, you have the gift of service. And what they mean by that is you have the gift of making things, of feeding people, of bringing food, right. of, but you don't have the gifting of preaching and teaching. You can have the gifting of service and have the gift of preaching and teaching mm -hmm. or not. That's just not the issue. It's just another way of expressing giftings. So <clears throat> here we go. This kind of kind of nails the point home in Ephesians 4.11. Uh, through 13. And he gave some as apostles, and some as prophets, and some as evangelists, and some as pastors and teachers, for the equipping of the saints for the work of service, mm. to building up of the body of Christ, <coughs> until we all attain the unity of faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a mature man, mm. to the measure of the stature, which belongs to the fullness of Christ. Mm. So works of service there. I mean, what yeah. if you look at that, honey, it's basically saying all those gifts we talked about mm -hmm. last week, mm -hmm. the reason I'm an apostle or a prophet yeah. or an evangelist or a pastor or a teacher is I'm equipping saints for works of service, for the yeah. work of service. And then the work of service is to build up the body of Christ. Yeah. So it would be anything that would be building up the body of Christ, right. which makes sense that it would be called a work of service because in that case, it's servanthood, right? And there's so many different tasks and leadership positions and um, giftings that could fall under that, but they're all kind of under this umbrella of servanthood, mm -hmm. being a, a servant to the body. So in that context, you look mm -hmm. at those scriptures, what does uh, the gifting of service mm -hmm. mean? Yeah. And what does it mean in the modern? I think you kind of even touched on it there. Like the, the idea is that uh, the Holy Spirit gifts each one of us to serve the people entrusted our care mm -hmm. to edify and build up the body yeah, of Christ. To build up the body of Christ. And that's a gifting that I think, and we look at mm -hmm. this context, is not limited to one person. I, yeah. don't think, I don't think anybody's going to say, 
uh, hey, why aren't you helping out with the dishes? Well, I don't have the gift of service. So right, right. It's not my, I'm more of a talker. Yeah. I'm more of, you should go do the dishes. Uh, right. Because or in reverse, it could be somebody who's doing the dishes and somebody else might say, come along and say, you know, maybe you should be doing other things. And, oh, I'm sorry, I don't have the gift of discernment. Like, right. it's not my job to think about other things. Right. And that is a great point, because one of the reasons I've tried to focus in on, I want us to expand God using our life, not just to limit it. Mm -hmm. uh, one, the idea of that, one of the best ways you can be used by the Holy Spirit is to look at a room, mm -hmm. to look at another individual, to look at the body of Christ, yeah. and then to ask this question. How can I serve in such a way that it builds up this community mm -hmm. and edifies this community and prepares this community to also serve as well? Yeah. Which is an interesting thing because the gift of service implies that you also are calling other people into that same gifting. Right, right. Which sometimes, and we'll just be honest on this, that sometimes people who are serving others don't necessarily bring others in on their service. They mm -hmm. just do all the serving, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, this is, I know how to do this. Let me just do this. You just sit mm -hmm. there and watch. Actually, part of expressing the gift of service is to invite others to join you, not to guilt them or to mm -hmm. judge them, but if they have a desire to activate that gifting mm -hmm. is to say, hey, let me show you how to serve. Yeah. Let me show you how to do this thing to build up an edifying body. Yeah. So in that context, you know, how are you activating uh, your gift of service? What I like about that is what I found like in a conflict, particularly when I'm in a conflicted place uh, with someone else, or I just don't know what to do. The gift of service is often what I mm. activate. And it's basically, okay, I don't, I'm not going to try to get anything from this person. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to, Lord, how can I serve them? Yeah. And what could I do with that would be serving? Now, they might mm -hmm. not see it as service, but what would be serving? Yeah, would yeah. serving be uh, to do, uh, and this is, again, not trying to manipulate someone, mm -hmm. but genuinely, how could I lighten their load? Yeah. How could I encourage and edify them? Yeah, and it might not even be doing what, I mean, you kind of said, what the other person might want you to do. It might not be going to the other person and saying, how can I, you know, make this better? Or what, what do you want from me sort of thing, but yeah. going to the Lord and saying, Lord, what do you want from right. me? What do you require from me in this situation? Right. That's really good. And I, the other one it reminds me is sometimes when people feel like they are in a bad place and boy, the term bad place can mean anything, but right. it's, you know, I'm just not in a good place with God. And, what do people tend to do when they feel like they're in a bad place? Whether they feel like, oh, I'm just kind of a failure and disappointing God, or I'm confused, or I'm angry, they tend to isolate. Mm -hmm. They tend to say, I'm going to go get things figured out. Yeah. And then when I'm in a better place, then I will participate in community. That's almost mm -hmm. always the issue. Isolation says, I'm not in a good place, so I'm going to isolate. I'm going to mm -hmm. get better, and then I'm going to get back into community. Yeah. The problem is that keeps you from allowing the Holy Spirit to use you in a mm -hmm. way that actually might bring you to a better place. Absolutely. One of the best things to do when you're in a bad place is to serve someone else. Mm -hmm. It's to get your mind off yourself. It's to serve. Mm -hmm. I, that's, by the way, that is the story of every sacrifice. Somebody's in a bad place to serve someone else. You know, the crucifixion is not an easy thing, right? Christ places himself in a bad place, a painful place, a harmful place, but for the purpose of serving us. Yeah. The focus is I'm going through this drama, but I'm going through it to serve you. Paul, mm. all the persecution he faced, I'm going through these things to serve you. Mm. And that is something we, we need to develop. So when we're in the lowest point, yeah. and when we're in the pit to say, okay, I'm going to intentionally mm -hmm. get my eyes off myself and mm -hmm. serve others. And That's why is it important? Because then it activates the communion with God. We yeah. sense God's presence and God's spirit. And we also realize yeah. this crazy thing that nothing really can separate us from the love of God. Yeah. And even though maybe my dreams and my plans and my hopes and my expectations have crumbled, that I see God's kingdom moving through mm -hmm. me as I'm serving someone else. So it gives you a whole yeah. nother view of the purpose of your life. Right the meaning of your expands life. your perspective it's almost spiritual growth you know a, mm -hmm. a midlife crisis is i think often occur when people refuse to see that life is about serving others mm. you know it, you can either you get to that point 
where not all your dreams are going to come true. Mm -hmm. Not all your desires are going to happen. You get a little restless. And so you either can be like, I need even more of my dreams and I'm going to abandon everyone. Mm -hmm. It's going to be me, me, self, self, self. Or mm -hmm. you go, you know what? It's going to be disappointment in life. I certainly am going to pursue yeah. the things that, that I feel God put on my heart. But I'm also going to now, this is what maturity is, mature. I'm not going to just be looking at myself all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm going to look towards others. I'm going to start investing in others the way they invested in Amen. me. Yeah, that's good. And God wants to do that with you. Not to, well, if everything's great in my life, then I'll invest in others. Right, no, that's right. not how it works. The people who invested in you were dealing with traumas as they invested in you. Mm -hmm. The people who served you, they were struggling in their marriage as they served you when you were a young man yeah. or a young woman. They were going through things, mm -hmm. but they took their eyes off themselves and they served others. And the kingdom of God was bigger than just what was going on in their own lives. Yeah, absolutely. Or their own lives became your life. They decided mm -hmm. to say, my life is about your life. Yeah. And that advanced the kingdom. So that's what we want to do. We want to serve. So there's uh, the gift of service. Do you have the gift of service? Yeah, probably. <laughs> Uh, and definitely the gift of service can always be used in some context. Uh, here's another one, exhortation. Exhortation is a fascinating mm -hmm. word in the sense it's not used that much in scripture. Uh, para kaleo would be it. It's actually even clo close to how the Holy Spirit is called our paraclete. That's a mm -hmm. cognition of the word, but they're, they're still separate. But you can see kind of the same thing in some ways. <clears throat> but exhortation, if you look at the Greek word, it can mean to encourage. Mm. to entreat, to beg, to exhort, to admonish, to comfort, to encourage, and to console. Wow. Now, this is something that was very important for me to look up and research because it helps you see the passion behind the word. Mm. Because the word, let's say, entreat. Entreat is kind of an older word, old, old English, but Entreat can be, I entreat you to, you know, give me some food. It can be a polite thing. But mm -hmm. if you see it in the larger context of how it's used, you realize entreat is just a passionate begging. Wow. Uh, I, and so the mm -hmm. begging part is passionate, but the flip side of that is encouragement. If it's used in the sign of begging and pleading, well, then what kind of encouragement are we talking about? Are we talking about the, hey, you did a good job? No, we're talking about a passionate wow, encouragement. Yeah. So by seeing the full use of the word that it's used in some ways is to beg and exhort and admonish, mm -hmm. then also in the comforting level, it's more than just there, there. Right. It's truly just giving your best energy to comfort, to encourage, to yeah. console. It actually has legal overturn, uh, overtones, uh, like a legal advocate, someone offering up evidence that stands up in God's court. Wow. Someone who speaks th the truth and I put this as a summary. It's someone who speaks truth that you believe, mm. or they don't stop speaking it until you believe it. It's that kind of advocacy. And I would say people maybe have a gifting of exhortation. There's a passion that they have to encourage you, to truly come alongside you, yeah. to speak the truth of God to you. But there's also a discernment in that of knowing what to say mm -hmm. to exhort you. And knowing when to stop and wow. <laughs> you know, when to start yeah. and <clears throat> knowing to, like the issue of they're not just pestering you, mm -hmm. but actually someone who can speak in a way, well, you'll let them exhort you too. Mm -hmm. that you, as they're speaking to you, you're like, I believe God is exhorting me. That's such a beautiful word, actually. I mean, it makes me really think of, of a contending. Yeah. And I think we all want to know that there's somebody who's contending for us. And we all know that Christ contends for us. The spirit contends for us on our behalf, but to know that there's somewhere that there's someone here on this earth in our body yeah. who contends for us mm -hmm. is a really beautiful thing. As I think we all need to know that there are other people on our side, that yeah. there are people who are for us. And it sounds like it's such an action word that exhortation that is like activating that knowledge that they are for us and that yeah. God is for us and to remind us of that. You know, the word literally means to call to one side. And yeah. it's the idea of that the spirit of God in us mm -hmm. wants to bring us closer, mm -hmm. wants to take us from that pit, yeah. you know, into a better, to stand in a better place, out of darkness, mm -hmm. into light. And that exhortation. Yeah is in us that we which can is, activate. Which that. is so such the opposite of what so many of us were raised in, in the church, that God was that 
you know, distant father who was judging us instead of that spiritual loving father that was pulling us toward him. And so even what you said about Christians will tend to, you know, withdraw and isolate when we feel like we're in a bad place instead of entering into the body and serving others. I mean, if we can give each other, if we can all be exhorters in the spirit, I think that would help the body, you know, to really pull people in and to know that they don't even have to be in this place of being fixed or having all their ducks in a row before they can really serve one another. Well, and this is where a word study encourages you with the passion of exhortation that Mm -hmm. Paul says, we have the gift of exhortation. And he uses this Greek word and we're like, well, what does that mean? Well, the Greek word in other places is often used. uh, and, And again, words can be used in different contexts. So it doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, depending upon the context is the meaning of the word, Mm -hmm. but exhortation of pleading, it's often the word used when people would come to Jesus and plea to be healed. Mm -hmm. The same word, it's the same word. Like they, Mm -hmm. they pleaded with him. Yeah. The desperate. And and then it Mm -hmm. also is used with demons who plead that Jesus will leave them alone. Right, that makes sense. It's this word of just like, this is the most important thing right Mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. And so someone with the gift of exhortation, and that would make sense. Like they believe that the most important thing is for you to know this. Sure. And like somebody who needs to be healed, like I'm not going away until you heal me, right? It's uh, nothing makes sense until I am healed. And so they plead with Jesus. Well, or the demons know that this encounter is not going to end well. So they plead Mm -hmm. that the encounter will stop and they keep pleading until something happens. And for them, their pleading doesn't work. But the idea is that there's going to be an encounter. That makes, yeah, that's And so why do you exhort? because it's that important mm-hmm. and it doesn't, the other person, you know, is indifferent to you or they don't understand it or they reject you. If you believe like this is important, mm-hmm. then you become the exhorter. And yes. by the way, all these things are more than words. Exhortation right. can be just showing up. Yeah. When you show up, they know what you mean. They're like, I know you're running from God, but you can't run from God anymore. Mm-hmm. Exhortation is coming and saying, I, I you know who I am and what I believe. And I believe this for you and I'm not going to leave you. Yeah. I'm going to pursue you with right. zeal. Yeah. Uh, a little more of the context of exhortation here. I, I think I might've given a few scriptures here. So Mark five eighteen. Uh, so yeah, this is just the example. It's often used for imploring Jesus to, to be for them to be healed or helped. That's in Matthew eight, five, Matthew 18, 29, Mark one forty, Mark five, eight. Um, in 1 Corinthians 4, 16, this is what Paul says. Therefore, I urge you to imitate me. That's the word. Wow. And you see this in Paul's letters. He will exhort or he'll urge. Mm. And so the gifting of exhortation is that kind of urging. Wow, yeah. It's a good thorn in the flesh. It's mm. like <laughs> you know, it's pestering people with mm. Jesus. Uh, prayer can be that. Some of you have the gift of exhortation in this tenacious prayer wow. because you believe someone's life is in the balance. Yeah. Therefore, I urge you to imitate me. And then, okay, let's read it mm-hmm. in 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 6. And all these words of comfort that I highlighted are all uh, the word for exhortation or, or a variation of it. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, Mm. who comforts us in all our troubles. So that's the same word. So now we're seeing it as, that makes the comfort sound more, right? It's used as plead. It's used as begging. Mm -hmm. So in this context, that's a comfort. That's a God who, it's not just, "Eh, you know, you're going to make it through it. That we have a God who tenaciously, powerfully, comforts us amen that's the ministry of exhortation not just having someone change but it's like i Mm. genuinely want you to know the comfort of god through me wow the father of compassion and the god of all comfort who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from god and you see this again that Mm -hmm. people who receive the gifting of exhortation and comfort also extend it to others and share it. And when we share the gift Mm -hmm. of exhortation, we are calling others to participate that in that as well. Wow. Again, this is why selfishness just kills growing in the fruits of the spirit. The fruit is for the body Mm -hmm. that anything God does in me, I want to help with somebody else. I'm not going to live a life where I just get mine and walk away. 
In fact, this is a principle of Alcoholics Anonymous or any anonymous yep, thing yep. that as you've recovered, uh, you mm -hmm. also help somebody else in recovery. That yeah. you have a sponsor and someone who sponsor is you're their sponsor and someone is your sponsor. Yeah. So that idea of that's a biblical idea. Mm -hmm. And that's a sign you're not in a good place if people have invested in you, but you are refusing to invest in other yeah. people. So it says, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. For just as we share abundantly in the suffering of Christ, so mm -hmm. also our comfort abounds through Christ. Amen. If we are, dist if we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces in you patience, endurance of the same suffering we suffer. In 2 Corinthians 5.20, it says this, We are therefore Christ ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. Mm. Uh, so that's the word in that sense. It's God, God is pleading appeal, through yeah. us. <clears throat> God is exhorting us. How are we exhorted? Mm. through people we wow. implore you on christ's behalf be reconciled to god Amen. so you know what does that look like exhortation in our context yeah. well one exhortation is the ministry of reconciliation mm -hmm. that we are constantly pleading with uh through our actions through our attitudes whether it is a pleading of challenging someone to go in the other direction mm -hmm. or comforting someone to you know maintain right. their sense of faith when they're in a place where they're feeling crushed for what purpose? For bringing people closer to God mm -hmm. and for bringing the brothers and sisters of God closer together. It's for the purpose of reconciliation. Amen. Are you willing to be an exhorter? Now, we know some people that just tend to be more exhorters. And I think sometimes mm -hmm. exhorting is tied with uh, pastor preaching, teaching giftings. There's an aspect. I think you know a little bit of me that if I talk with someone or deal with something, I, I tend to be like, this is who God is and this is what you can do. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I got to be careful because sometimes that gifting might not be needed at that point. The mm -hmm. other person needs to speak. The other person needs to find what God is saying. And I can come in in my exhortation and actually cut them off from their own discernment process. Mm -hmm. So even that idea where you, your, your tenacity is immediately to mm -hmm. go to someone who's in, in the pit or feeling sad and immediately confront them and immediately say, you know, you can get out of that, but they might need you just to sit with them mm -hmm. and to listen. And maybe even that gifting is to be used, but you need to wait because the goal is the comfort you've received for them to receive it as well. And yeah. for them to be able to access the spirit as you access the spirit, not to become their spirit. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause that could be unhealthy too, where you're the person who has to encourage and build them up and strengthen them and they don't develop their own. So that's once again, that's where our opportunity to press into the spirit and to know what the spirit is calling us to do with every situation. Amen. Should we do one more or is that it? How long have we been going here? We have been going 35 minutes 35 already. Minutes. Let's, do, let's do one more here. I'm glad you kept track of time. As you guys know, I lose all sense of time when I'm speaking <laughs> and that sometimes is to your detriment. But, uh, oh, I just did something here that's not going to help you. Okay. We so, disappeared completely, didn't uh, we? I'm going to share some more scripture here and let's see here. So uh, giving, mm. we'll, we'll, we'll leave with that. <clears throat> giving, metadidomai, metadidomai. Uh, and basically giving mm -hmm. is one of those, there's not that actually that many scripture references for it, uh, but it's pretty self-explanatory. What does it mean to give? It means to impart mm. or to give. And sometimes also, the scripture translates it lend. Hmm. And that's an interesting thing because um, if you look at some scriptures where it says lend to your, there's a scripture that says lend to your enemies and oh, don't yeah, expect yeah. to be repaid. That could also be translated give to your enemies. Hmm. Uh, you understand the context right there. That right. <laughs> the word is even saying that was never yours. If yeah. you're going to lend, you're actually just giving. Yeah. And that's why you're really definitely not expecting return. Right. So that's a different concept of lending. For yeah. us, we're like, well, lending is you get it back. Right, with interest. But that word <laughs> is translated lending in some places and give in some places. Mm -hmm. Well, if you translate it this way, uh, when your enemy asks for something, give to them and don't mm -hmm. expect to be repaid. That seems to me to say a little better than lend to them and don't yeah. expect to be repaid. Yeah. And it helps right up front for you to know what you're doing. Like, right. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not lending this thing. Yeah. I'm just giving it. 
and trust him that they'll be blessed. Yes. Uh, so here's a couple scriptures in that. Um, this gives us some context for giving. Romans 8, uh, 12, excuse me, Romans 12, 8. Paul says, are we, are he who exhorts in his exhortation, which we saw before, mm -hmm. he who gives with liberality. <laughs> So that tells you the kind of giving we're supposed to have. I'll just give you the other one too. Uh, having so fond an affection for you, we were well pleased to impart to you, so impart means give, to give to you not only the gospel of God, but also our own lives yes. because you had become very dear We just to us. talked about that in women's group, how beautiful that is to be giving of your own right. life. So in those contexts, <clears throat> how do I give? With liberality, that means yeah. it's not only as much as you mm -hmm. ask for. Mm -hmm. It's a heart of generosity. Mm -hmm. It's that I I give and desire to give more. That a spirit, uh, a someone who is expressing uh, the gift of giving, yeah, is someone who is constantly. People are like, no, that's too much. Mm -hmm. That they're saying, no, I I'll take this, mm -hmm. but you you've given me too much which I think implies grace, right? Grace is unmeasured favor. Mm -hmm. And so if giving is occurring through us through the spirit, the spirit is going to have us give in a way that expresses God's grace. Which once again is so interesting when we talk about the body and how the body can function together and that idea of withdrawing or isolating when we don't feel like we have something to give. Yeah. How when we operate, you know, in the world's ways, that would make sense because the world tells you, well, you can't give what you don't have. Right. But operating in the spirit is such a beautiful thing because if we're giving of the spirit, then we're not even having to worry about giving something that is of ourselves. And that doesn't mean that we don't have boundaries and that's where we've <laughs> got to be sensitive to the spirit. And we only give when the spirit is asking us to, but if we're laying down our lives and we're giving of our lives and our very being, we can do that through the spirit, mm -hmm. even when we are in weak places and even in places where we feel personally, maybe depleted mm -hmm. of resources, the spirit can work through us and that we can be a conduit of the spirits. That is a really, a really good point and why it's better to study the scripture with someone else uh, because it expands to me the idea that often, let's say, when we talk about somebody who has the gift of giving, mm -hmm. sometimes we'll use an explanation like this, that there's some people who've been given resource. Yeah. You, you have a job where you get a lot of money. Are you mm -hmm. inherited uh, money? Are you and, and then we've seen people like that give away a lot of stuff. We've seen uh, benefactors yeah. and, uh, you know, people, I'm trying to think of the right word of this, but they're the ones you call whenever you do a fundraiser mm -hmm. and they have some money and they're willing to give away a lot yeah, of their money. Which is amazing. And yeah. we will say often, well, that person is expressing, you know, the spiritual gift of giving. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, they are. But what Jen just said there is so important is that this isn't about how much resource yeah. we have. It's about what God wants to do through us. Mm -hmm. And that makes it so we can't just say, well, I don't have the gift of giving because I got nothing to give. Yeah. And, you know, I'm too weak. I'm too tired. I'm too poor. Mm -hmm. I'm too sick. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the question we ask, we say, Lord, how do you want me to give yeah. with liberality mm -hmm. of myself to this person yeah. for the purpose of building and edifying the body? Like, yeah. how, how do you want me to do that? Yeah. And if we start with the resource, then it's more like, well, I have this, but I don't know if I want to give it. That is a discussion. Mm -hmm. Are you willing to share something? Are you yeah. willing to give? But that limits our discussion because some people might just not even think about giving. Mm -hmm. Like when you hear the term give, you're like, well, I don't have any money. It's like, this is not for me. Or, right, right. I don't have the time. I'm too busy. This isn't for me. Yeah. And so then we close ourselves off and just assume this is how God uh, works through us. But we mm -hmm. know the, the best gifts are grace gifts. Amen. And the grace gift would not only be in the receiver, yeah. but in the giver. Yeah. That I gave something that I did not think I could give to mm -hmm. someone who did not think they should receive. <laughs> yeah. God will be in that mix. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well. Giving of yourself. It's God has something for us to give. Mm -hmm. and, and it can be within boundaries and it can be but it, it might be something completely different than what you think mm -hmm. well you can you can give a listening ear mm -hmm. um, you can give of your time yeah you can give of encouragement mm -hmm. we all have something to give and to give it with liberality to give yeah. it 
plenty of it and to give of ourselves, which I think is what it implies by weakness too. Mm -hmm. If it's like, well, this doesn't affect me to give that to you. That's not really giving of yourself. Mm -hmm. Giving of yourself is a part of me is going out and with you. And I'm excited about that. I'm excited that an expression of who I am is now inhabiting your life. And I take joy out of that. Not what I have lost but I've gained this in the sense of now who I am is expressed in the life you're living Mm -hmm. as well. So how do we live that, you know, generosity? I think one of the biggest things is, especially with giving is that we need to be quick to respond to God's first Mm -hmm. um, tugging of our heart to give whenever Mm -hmm. you feel at any level, Mm -hmm. a desire that you should give, I would ask you to act upon that. Mm -hmm. Because often the flesh right. argues against it. Absolutely. But we've talked about this many times that there are things we regret in life, mm-hmm. but we don't sit around regretting giving yeah. things for the kingdom of God. Yeah. We just don't. No. And oftentimes I don't even remember when we've given out of a place of not having abundance. I don't remember years later yeah. that being a hardship and what yeah. a beautiful thing that is. And I don't give to get. I don't give to saying we gave that and God gave us this gift Mm -hmm. is a a grace gift. This isn't mine to have. It's that God is using us as vessels Mm -hmm. to advance his kingdom. And Mm -hmm. he's telling us, I will advance my kingdom through you, through you giving this. So it's not yours to keep. Amen. If God tells you to give, it ain't yours. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it isn't ours in general, but that clearly it's not yours. Yeah. And then in God telling us to give, he is also promising that he will provide for us what we need. Mm -hmm. And that provision might just be we have less. (laughs) That might be what it is. If our giving doesn't cost us anything, is it really giving, right? Mm -hmm. If if there's no impact to our lives, did we really give? And so it's not about trying to figure out all the implications of giving. It's just being willing to be obedient to God's heart. He says, give and we give. Uh, with just joy. Amen. So I hope these things will help you. We're going to continue to go through spiritual gifts. I'd like you to take the different things that we talk about. We have the you know, gift of ministry or service, uh, the gift of exhortation, mm. uh, the gift of giving. Do we have another one there? I don't remember which the other one is, but you'll remember. But whatever God's put on your heart, uh, just ask the Lord, am I open to expressing mm. these gifts? Because as we've said, some of us seem to operate more in some of these giftings. But regardless, if you're the only one in the room, God's going to use these giftings yeah. through you. If there's ministry needed and mm-hmm. or no one else is willing to do it, guess what? You're going to have the gift of exhortation. You're going to have the gift of service if service is needed for the kingdom of God to advance in that room. Amen. So we are going to be open for God to... So you talk about putting on different hats. You know, people say I wear different hats at, a, at work. You know, I'm the boss and I'm this and I'm that. Well, when it comes to spiritual gifts, you've got a wall of hats that each have, you know, gift of service, gift mm-hmm. of giving, gift. And depending upon what is needed, mm-hmm. you may be wearing one or two hats at yeah. the time. And what they're really just going to see is Jesus. And mm-hmm. you're going to see Jesus as well. Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you Jesus. Thanks. Thank you, Lord. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. You, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord God, you're so good. I thank you that um, these spiritual gifts and what we're learning, even it comes out of your love for us, that you know us so well and you know our needs so well and you know how to build the body so well and want to build the body so well that you have (laughs) causes great variety, um, great uniqueness um, to these, to these giftings, to these callings. And I just thank you for that. Thank you that that comes out of your great love for us and wanting to meet our needs and wanting to, to make it so that we can bring others, um, into relationship with you and into a fuller understanding of you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I just pray that you would open our ears and open our hearts Mm -hmm. and get us excited to being used that gift of service, that there are so many ways Thank that you, you want to serve others through us. Thank you, Jesus. So would you just open our eyes and our hearts uh, that in every situation we would, we would be open to allow your kingdom to advance through us and that Thank we would you, truly Lord. serve others in a way that builds them up, yes, edifies Lord. them and strengthens yes, the body. Thank you, God. 
We thank you for all thank these things Lord. in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, so just so you know, for Halloween, I'm trying to dress up as a wild mountain man that doesn't shave or yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll clean this up. It's getting pretty bad. Isn't <laughs> it? It's like, well, that's nice of you to say that, but they have to watch it as well. So <laughs> we don't exactly have like high def going here. Yeah. It's, it's getting much. As uh, we get closer. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Love you all. Love you. Talk to you later. <laughs>